I want to talk about a new study that has just come out. Uh, it's been uh, released by the US-based uh, Duke Global Health Innovation Center. Now, this global analysis of advanced market commitments for experimental vaccines has says that India has already ordered some 600 million doses by utilizing its manufacturing capabilities. And it's now aiming to secure another billion doses of the coronavirus vaccine. Now, that sounds like a great thing because we seem to be pretty covered. Well, at least for starting. If you look at India and India's manufacturing capacity, we have, as you know, the biggest manufacturers in the world. The companies that we have in Pune and in Hyderabad are just incredible in the number of doses of vaccine that they can make every year. So I don't think that we should be worrying because our vaccine manufacturers are looking to make their own vaccines. But wherever in the world there are successful vaccines, those if people want bulk capacity, if they want to be able to deliver vaccines to the world at an affordable price, I think everyone is going to have India on their radar. Indian companies will be asked, they already have been asked by Novavax, by J&J. The multinationals are coming here and asking our vaccine companies that if our vaccines are successful, will you make them? And if those vaccines are being produced in India, obviously there will be a push to give access to the Indian population for those vaccines. So I think it's really part of the platform that the vaccine companies have built so far, how proactive they've been in seeking out partnerships that has resulted in a situation where, you know, I think in India, we should be reasonably confident that we will have access to vaccines, not just because of the AMC of the government, but even beyond that well into the future i just want to come back and touch upon the the global study which sort of analyzed the pre-ordering of vaccines now india has pre-ordered 600 million doses we, we I, and you know they're probably trying to secure another billion we said um according to the study uh and then the study also of course india is second only to the united states as far as um, uh, pre-ordering of vaccines is concerned. Now, the United States, of course, being a rich country, India being a country where vaccine can be manufactured. But um, uh, do you think, uh, you know, so there's a lot of criticism coming from WHO and other stakeholders um, that, you know, uh, uh, not criticism, really concern that richer countries and many mid-income countries like India, which have a vaccine production capacity, uh, are pre-ordering the bulk of uh, vaccines. So fewer vaccines, uh, fewer vaccines will be available to the poorer nations or the low-income nations. Uh, I know there are no easy answers, but where do you stand on this argument? So I think we need to be good global citizens. So when we think about prioritization, the prioritization should not depend on where you live and how much you can pay. So even though countries are pre-ordering vaccines, in India, this is only for 30% of the population, a little less than 30% of the population. And we don't know with all of the pre-orders whether these will be successful vaccines and the supply will really be what we think it's going to be. I think if it does turn out that all of the vaccines are successful and these doses become available, then it's a question of the timing of doses. You might have paid for them, but you might be willing to wait to get doses of the vaccine until other places that have priority populations that have not been immunized receive that vaccine. All right. All right, uh, ma'am. And of course, uh, I just want to, uh, you know, end by irrespective of the hoarding, uh, when do you think, uh, you know, there'll be enough vaccines to cover the world's population? I mean, if that's even a area that you want to go into. 
I think a lot depends on how frequently we will need to immunize, which are the one dose vaccines, the two dose vaccines, the three dose vaccines, and how long does protection last? I think somewhere between the end of 2022, we will have a reasonable supply. And I think reaching the world's population, or as many as we hope to immunize, will be more towards the end of 2023, 2024. So a lot will depend on how many candidates are successful That's and which are the platforms on which these vaccines are being made. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. But before I go, I have one last question, which I really want to put to you. Uh, a lot of people are talking about how predictable this, you know, that, that the virus is behaving so far, pretty predictably, uh, uh, you know, but I, as I said, again, no medical training. Uh, but uh, what is perhaps the most unpredictable thing about this particular virus, according to you? To me, the most unpredictable thing is who has severe disease and who does not. We have no way of having prior information that if a young person or an elderly person is infected, who will do well and who will do badly. We have a broad picture. Younger people do well, older people do badly. But at the individual level, we have no understanding of which way it's going to go when a person is acutely infected.